Now, okay, so my name is Joanna Pacevic and I am head of PR and marketing department at Beach Cloud for C region. And um, in the past, I was a spokesperson at NC Plus and also a head of a new tech unit in the oldest PR agency that calls Sima International. And uh, for five years, I running um, PR activities and also advising in brand um, communication for such brands like Alcatel Lucent, Amadeus, HP, Lexmark, and Microsoft. And now I have a pleasure to um, present my some tips and uh, tricks how to grab media attention without spending money on it. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I will talk about a bit on do's and don'ts on how to, how to um, catch media attention with a low cost budget. And also I will suggest some ideas, um, on how to build your brand and establish relations with, with media. Um, and what I would like to also do, I will try to suggest you some um, creative concept, how to build your brand, because um, maintaining relations and also having a, um, a contact or a dialogue with media is about your, your brand. So. Um, first learn I would like you to remember is that building a brand is not an overnight operation. So the whole process usually usually takes um, a lot of work, painful effort, and a lot of mistakes are made along the way. But the success is sweet, rewarding, and um, and especially you work on your account. It really matters. So um, let's um, find out so how does your brand add value the world? And um, the answer to this question is really crucial for us because it's what your journalists, your customers, your um, investors uh, care about. So um, essentially, um, you want to provide to customers um, um, your good or, or service. So you have to explain why is it better or over others. So what is the factor about your brand that makes it more valuable than other brands uh, in the same field as, as yours? Mm, well, um, I would say that people would only care about your brand if you can add a real uh, value to them in some form. Uh, for instance, for instance, your product solve for your business or provides luxury. Uh, the point is to find what makes your, your business valuable to your customers and to, to potential customers. And um, one of the methods uh, to find what is the main value for your business um, to your customers is preparing a one sentence uh, that encapsulates the purpose of your activity. So besides of this, it is also important because it helps you um, not to lose your goal, you know, in, in, in the in the perspective. Um, so it also help uh, to. Mm, let your comp company be remembered, of course, if you do it regularly. And moreover, you can start with this one sentence speech. For instance, if you want to start a pitch talk or to start presentation, really helpful. Now, um, in preparing one sentence speech, and I will show you some, some examples later, um, is that the construction is always the same. We start with the name of the company uh, at the beginning, that highlighting how it can solve problems of the world or offer uh, something um, extra thanks to, to their uh, advantages. The question is, so the question is, how, what is, what is the value? So to pitch the, the, the pitch that you are making, 
should be um, short to the point and focus on explaining the company's value proposition and, and service. Um, so use that template, uh, template like I highlighted below. So we have the name of the company is developing what or offering what to help your target audience to solve a specific problem with a kind of magic. And um, why is it important? Because the, the answer is uh, what journalists and your audience is uh, care about. And um, and so let's be uh, let's be authentic to your company's goal, purpose, and and the vision. First, uh, ask yourself what. Uh, then what are the benefits? And then what is uh, what is unique? So <clears throat> let's have a glimpse at uh, at examples. Well, so. Um, Using this format I presented before, we had the name of the company. So we have Slack is a new way to communicate with your team. End of the story. Yes. In the one one line, we have something. What is it? And what is what is doing? And uh, the second line is explaining why. Uh, what is the magic? Yes, behind it. So it's faster. It's <clears throat> better organized and far more secure than, than email. Okay. So we are doing. So we are using Slack. LinkedIn is the world's largest professional uh, network on the internet. And in second line, you can learn more about link LinkedIn. We can use it yeah, to find uh, the job, for instance, to, to network, to connect, to reinforce professional uh, relation, relationships. But the point is that it's the world's largest professional network. This is it. Mm. And another example, a bit shorter, is Loyar, Docker, and Uber. Loyar Paris is the world leading cosmetics brand making the best luxury beauty available and accessible to everyone. So we know what is it. We have the solution. Yes, we have the solution and we know that it's universal. You can use L'Oreal cream, your friend, your, your family you can use very, very products because it is open to everyone and also luxury. So it's, it's right. Docker. Docker is the open platform for developing and running applications. And let's have a look how they are communicating. So they are number one most wanted and um, number two most loved developer tool. It's nice. And what they're doing, they help millions of developers build, share, run the application anywhere, on-premise or, or in the cloud. So, so we have um, a value. <clears throat> We have solution in, in one sentence. And Uber application gives you the power to get anywhere, anywhere you want. And more, mm, what is more, we can pick up the, mm, the, the transport and also go across more, more than thousand, thousand cities. Um, this is it. And um, now I would like to present you the, mm, let's say, incorrect. Um, example um we are and i found it really i found it on the on, on the internet and i thought to myself it would be good to, to to show you how not to communicate so we are an advanced platform designed to give your uh, business smart solutions we don't know who is who we are we don't know uh, what advanced platform um, we are talking about and we really do not understand what uh, needs will be solved or addressed in uh, using using this advanced platform. Um, so there is no name of the company. The message is generic, and I would say that it should be a second line. <laughs> Or because right now it seems like uh, taken out the, of the context. And once you crafted your one sentence pitch, um, you can try to make uh, another exercise. So it means that it, um, it makes you extremely shorter and try to illustrate the value of your company in a few words. Uh, not just sentence, but few words. So let's let's have a look. We have here mentioned before L'Oréal Paris, and because you are aware of it, you remember that that we mentioned that they are universal for you for for your um I don't know <laughs> part of part of family because they want to 
um, position themselves like like this. We have also Citroën, a creative technology, and I think that uh, that is two words. It's not an accident that that a company put here in their credo, because the point is that you know there are some rumors on the market or some I don't know superstitions or um, any other. Um, observations that French, that French, um, that it's better to drink French wine than to uh, buy French cars. So it was a very smart move. Um, as I see it, you know, from the, from the position of, um, of a PR specialist, because we want to underline that there is technology behind, behind this name and also creative. So French creative and technology, and we have Citroën. Also, we have MMMs, uh, which melts in your mouth and in your hand. And I personally disagree with it because each time, each time I'm doing the same exercise and I'm trying, you know, to melt MMMs in my hand, in my hand, and <laughs> and I can do it. But anyway, um, the sweets. So they wanted, you know, to distinguish themselves from from the other sweets on the on, on the world. And I think that it's um at pretty okay and at least it makes people like me to make some experience with with, with the sweetie so you know i can buy try and, and share share the experience um airbnb blanc and aware love it really love it because uh it you know it illustrates the vision of the of, of the company and you know it's it's only about booking the bed, yes, or flat or, or, or apartment, but belong anywhere, it means, wow, yeah, universal is ours, the word is, you know, the word is us. And at the right, at the right side, we have some, um, Part of Nike, but we have some a new uh, credo of uh, of companies. We have Real Magic, Coca Cola, and Pepsi. Uh, Coca Cola changed their very slogan lately, and as I can see, they they would like to be associated with um with something special, like for instance Christmas and Santa Claus, of course, or um or an or, or celebrations, I, I would say, whereas Pepsi, it's a uh, that's what I like. So Pepsi wants to be my friend, and Coca Cola wants to um, associate with with something special event uh, in my life. And you know, um, you can do some exercises around you and see how brands are are communicating and um, and feel what is the sentiment uh, you have if you see for instance uh, this because open source matters or, or real magic what do you feel and this sort of feeling this is something better the brands would like to create in in, in us okay so now um now my favorite part what you can do better than others mm, at the previous Previous slide, you uh, you saw some examples of of the short pitch, and now I will explain you how you can learn from someone else's ex experience. And um, and let's start with Bolt or or Booksy. Booksy is, is a good example because um, when you look at Booksy, first of all, we we see is a is a simple uh, tool that solves the most common uh, problem that uh, occurs in um, the sector of services. So making appointment with hairdresser, for instance, or manicurist is sometimes painful. And um, and uh, Booksy, which is which application um, proved to be so helpful, so intuitive that has been adopted globally. And the secret sauce is that uh, Booksy found a, a big niche when they put together in one place and added a simple tool um, for making appointments. So this is um, how the marketing looks like. Also, they are very coherent in what they are doing. Um, so they focus on functionality. Also, the number of prof professionals got rid on the platform and the simple uh, weeks for um, 
B2C customers. I don't know if you had a, a chance to, to, to use Book C, but it's very intuitive. And you know, sometimes uh, when you are a PR person, this is, um, I'm doing the grandma test, really. It, <laughs> I don't know if it, um, if it, um, if it, if I met uh, with something before, but if I craft, for, insta for instance, a media pitch, or if I see it at application and I'm trying to use it, I always ask myself if my grandma would use it. If it's uh, intuitive enough and simple enough that anybody who is starting with this application um, will do, you know, straight, straight away. This is it. Okay, and Bolt uh, is your assistant that help you to get somewhere or order food or mm, uh, or uh, buy basic products. And Bolt is adapt uh, adapter. I would like you to um, mm, I would like to highlight this this word that this adapter because little of topic. Uh, if you are hungry for business development ideas, um, Adaptor is a company that took something that existed before and um, made it better. Mm, so the magic uh, of, this, of, of this case was that um, that um, Bolt was not the first because um, they start to providing um, because the first was. Um, uh, I forget, but it was very, um, very generic and, and intuitive. Um, but the, they wasn't first to, to start providing such uh, devices, but they did it so on slightly different uh, basis. They position uh, position themselves as a as a small company from even smaller Estonia that cares about people. This is the, this is the thing. Um, their employees, people who want to use their application, and they tailor even their their communication um, to this. As for instance, emails to their customers are always signed, or uh, if they would like to present new features, they are presenting via via email. You know, like to, like the simple sharing with someone you you like, and. Um, um, and the, the secret sauce in this case is that both is extremely close to their, to their client, really. And they are building almost uh, personal relations. And it's paid off, as we can see. And Slack, which is a communicator, um, is also an, ad a, a, an adapter because it is a messenger that is supposed to facilitate communication in the team. The first one was Basecamp, who made a good solution, really, uh, but in a powerful and big and, un again, unintuitive uh, tool. So Slack learned, uh, you know, uh, from very example and made very friendly to, you see the, 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 the words that I am repeating all the time, intuitive, friendly, close to client, simple. Yes, and it matters. And uh, okay, and um, uh, what is more, Slack is adding features the customers ask for. So what we, what we are doing, we are listening to the customers. And if the customer says, okay, Slack, you know, I would like you to, I don't know, um, facilitate or that Slack uh, answers the only answer. Really, it's 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 also um, it's also a crucial thing. Now, so um, if you want your company in media, you need to know in which media and uh, and why. Um, I would like to highlight in this place that you don't have to know a lot of people when you start a business. Really, but um, you need to build your brand consequently, and also, yes, it it takes time, because as we said before, building night is not an um, overnight operation. Um, so you have um, contact people and um, keep in touch regularly. And you know, 
believe me, this is a large part what expensive PR companies do. Really, they are looking for specialists, experts, media persons. They are um, networking and they maintain relations. This is all about. Um, so, and why is it important? Because um, uh, people that need PR done for them is because they have uh, something to, to communicate. On the other hand, you have media people who have an upcoming deadline and they do not have any interesting stories to publish. And believe me, it happens all the time. So then you come you and you made a, you made a day because you have something which is, which is uh, important. Well, so, um, but first of all, you have to make, um, you have to do your homework and make a list of media you are interested in um, and make sure that they cover topics uh, in your field and, um, or that you will interest somehow um, them with your message. So um, pull articles to distill a list of authors. This is one thing. And uh, create email list based on the information and um, write, um, write to targeted and, um, and effective pages. And uh, please do not uh, for, forget that we have to keep uh, communication short and to the point. Um, and about um, develop compelling message. Well, <clears throat> let's do a quick test here. How often do you read sponsored articles? Or do you think that uh, advertorial is reliable? Um, the secret is appealing message because newspaper and other media receive thousand press releases every day. Yes, and it, it's true. So how do they choose the ones to feature? Only the ones with the most compelling message and might be the most interesting to their readers, listeners or viewers uh, be picked. Now, help, don't sell. Tag, don't yell, and show, don't tell. Um, mm -mm. If you want to make an impact online, um, what your business needs to do, remember the web is where we go for answers. We all do. And we are all sick and tired of being sold to. So if you help, people like you. Um, so you should know why this announcement you would like to release uh, matter. What is the impact on the industry? It is important to be deliberated about who you are targeting with the news and to reach your goals. The content must be tailored, as, as I said. And <laughs> the sad truth is that <clears throat> your product is not interesting, really. Um, it's not interesting because uh, it is far more appealing and important to people what they can get out of it. Um, so what problem um, will it solve? What will help? What will they got extra? And you can imagine where for instance in e-commerce, there is a whole group of users who choose to buy from certain supplier because for instance, uh, they support um, rainforest restoration or uh, work with an animal shared shelter. So they are not just buying the products, they are doing something good. Um, so um, the point is that your product is interesting, but how it affects other is. How does it improve the business life or our daily job is. How it helps the environment, oh, it's gorgeous. And how you want uh, to create new jobs with your solution, wow, well, oh, it's compelling and, and fascinating. Okay, <clears throat> so, <laughs> and, uh, True is that usual, usually we do not buy products, but um, rather solutions. Okay, so um, another effective way to make a noise around uh, your rant is team up uh, with, with somebody else. Um, so 
for instance, um, collaborations with other companies or associations or foundations that are trying to reach a similar base like you and for instance you can this is something what we are doing at, at OVH Cloud that we are running joint um, join webinars, join uh, workshop, we are crafting joint content like expert articles. Expert articles this is something that media like because media um, media like knowledge so if you have a um, willing company to team up i think that it would be also an, an asset for you so start connecting with media people and linkedin is a great way for them build friendship with them ask if there is anything if you can help with in any way and provide massive uh, massive value for asking for for anything Mm, at the same time, I start connecting with people who have strong message, like, for instance, uh, bloggers, authors, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, business owners, coaches, speakers, influencers, and so on. Or we can consider why not to become an expert. Uh, why is it important? Mm, because, as I said before, mm, media loves authority, and if they learn that uh, that mm, they will get meaningful expert commentary from you, they will keep coming back. Really, it works like this. And there are another assets uh, for you if you would like to be an expert, uh, because you can up your value to your to your organization, and uh, also, you are developing yourself, your skills and, and, and your knowledge. And if you are the best, the place where your customers hang out, you are, you are the best. Mm, okay, and mm, the best expert, and this is the beauty of being expert, um, is that the best expert can make complicated uh, topics very easy uh, to understand uh, to understand and this is uh, what makes everyone to uh, listen to this person and what is beautiful uh, the knowledge is already on the table because we have uh, books that was written I don't know decades ago we have internet so you can take it and transform it in more accessible way um, imagine having a person who can ex who can um for instance um explain in, in simply words what cryptocurrencies or uh, are all about or who can present you the cloud and possibilities that cloud is is, is giving to you mm, the cloud expert and uh, the expert cloud but the sector expert can um talk about it in a very passionate way so <clears throat> so mm, first and foremost um identify what are you interested in and mm, in becoming expert process, um, the education plays an important role um, because it's it's not enough to have um, a superior understanding or knowledge of your industry and execute it through your business. Um, but you need to be prepared to pass down uh, that knowledge and use it uh, to empower your colleagues or media or investors or anyone you are talking to um, and social media mm, well so social media is more than only posting you know the the, the finished article or, or post because this is the place when you can develop your your idea or um, or change with others your I don't know thoughts or, or, or impressions and slowly build your brand step by step and um, you might uh, laugh at people you know who are post who are posting um, all day but they are networking in this this way mm, so um, positioning yourself at the front from and 
<laughs> from <laughs> the forefront of discussion or uh, putting yourself in, in conversation. For, uh, for instance, it will feature your blog and um, carrying log is very useful for somebody who wants to become become an expert and um, what is um, worth to mention is that your audience is the key and uh, don't be afraid to branch into new projects and consistent uh, content delivery build audience loyalty so this is something that um, that we care about to conclude i would like to highlight that what you really need in building your brand process um, is engagement and um, and passion and ready to work and connecting with the with the right people and you know it's not a it's very easy to find a professional PR um, agency and to pay but I'm I'm sure and I strongly believe that um, starting leveraging your talents and assets that you that your team already has, uh, it can be also highly attending and very rewarding for you. So this is it <laughs> from my side and and if you have a question, you can uh, ask me right now or if you have any second thoughts you can um you can reach me via linkedin okay great thank you very much uh, uh Jan. i have one question uh because you've given us a lot of examples about the perfect one sentence pitches but uh do you have some examples of red flags of shutting the knees that sometimes you meet in one sentence pitches. Red flag means red flags like they shut in the knee for their for themselves. They uh, say something and you and you are already like I don't like them. I don't like this idea. Ah, so <laughs> so you you want me to to give you some some bad examples on it? Yeah, exactly. Oh God! Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Okay, you know I have a, I have a one example from our past, and this is something that I sometimes um, showing to my to my stu students because uh, sometimes I run workshops on on brand building. Um, a decade ago, um, the brand Vidal Sassoon came to Poland, and they have uh, their slogan "Wash and Go." And uh, and they failed, failed uh, in on our market. They couldn't. Um, they made a great campaign. Really, it was a PR campaign, and they distributed the samples of the shampoo and and some of the others in our in our boxes. It was something new for our market, and they had a slogan: "Vida Sassoon, wash and go." So. Here on our market, we transform it that you wash your hand and your hair uh, go. And I think that the slogan was okay, but there was a there wasn't a point with the slogan. The point was that we, uh, as the market, we wasn't prepared, we wasn't ready for the product like this, you know, which combined uh, two things in 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 one battle. So we are prepared. Um, so this this is an example, but it wasn't about uh, construction of of one sentence speech. It was a right momentum, I I would say, that uh, that great company didn't pick up the right momentum uh, well. But if you want, I will I will prepare some examples, credos, but it's not. Um, but I would elaborate more on it. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you very much for that because I remember the book Power of Habit where there is this example of air freshener, but yeah. they try to uh, try to sell it as something when something smells in your house horribly, and you uh -huh. use an air freshener, and it didn't work because nobody wants to say that something smells in their houses, so they have decided to change it and make a habit out of it. 
So once you you're done cleaning, then uh-huh. you can uh, you can finalize it with an air freshener, and everything is perfect. So this is what comes to, comes to my mind. But can I see some questions from the audience? Uh, should startups hire a PR agency? No. 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 Absolutely. Um, you know, um, first and foremost, you have to pay to PR agency. And, um, and I think that but PR do not have enough money, you know, to uh, to to pay PR agency. They, uh, but if you do not have time, because it's normal, you know, in, in startup time, uh, startup case, uh, they afford, for example, to buy, uh, for instance, an article or building a media base. So to buy a project, not a retainer monthly fee, because it's it's, it's very expensive. Um, so I, but I think, and in my opinion, we can do it, you know, personally. And um, and what is advantage of it is that we are constantly learning because we are uh, already. Um, um, we can find journalists who is interesting in our topic. We can um, learn more about about our sector, for instance. Uh, we can think about our vision and about products and you know mm, facilitate it or refine it or you know work on it so i think that um pr relations is not only about doing media noisy around us but it's about um our company and products and our approach and philosophy so if we have everything on the table yes we can hire pr agency or we can we can buy a project from them but in my strongly opinion we can do it on our own and yes i know it's time consuming but it's very rewarding yeah but if you if your startup is developing really fast so uh-huh. when is the right moment to hire a pr agency or or do you do you think that you shouldn't hire a PR agency, agency ever? Oh no, you know, somebody invented PR agency and uh, you know, it, it worked good, but <laughs> I think that um, you can hire a PR agency at uh, um, all time, at the very beginning, because they, uh, because you can consult your idea with professionals, for instance, or they have a media uh, base that, that you can use. So you can do it at the very beginning if you have budget for it, but if not, you can engage them at uh, each point of your of your project because they are giving some assets knowledge know-how base media relations network that you need all the time being a startup and um i forgot about one thing i forgot about one thing if i'm um if i'm um, speaking about um, because we have um, in Warsaw who is running a venture cafe meeting each Thursday and this is the this is the area that startups can meet some investors or some some future client or um, change their idea because um, because here in Warsaw each each Thursday um, venture cafe preparing for instance some uh, presentations or some you know gathering to um, keep together all um, startup uh, ecosystem and factors yeah i think that the networking is the key it was pretty hard during the COVID um, situation and i can only say as in from best bit that best uh-huh. do uh, almost the same thing because once a startup fill up the profile uh, can, uh, uh, investors and accelerators can connect with them and apply to other programs. So yeah, that's good to, uh, I think that it's good to be present on the uh, online events, offline events and on the platforms mm-hmm. dedicated mm-hmm. for startup ecosystem. And there was the question about uh, PR agency that I think that should you hire a PR agency before launch of a start of a product? 
should you um well um maybe i'll put it like this that um working with pr agency agency is always helpful and um of course, it will help us uh, before the, the launch because, for instance, they have already media base on the table, so they know uh, to who address our message. They can help us craft our message if we do not know how to do, how to do it or if we do not have enough time to do it. So, of course, it's, it's very helpful, you know, to, to hire a PR agency because, <laughs> because they have, um, they have the, the knowledge and know-how you know, up and ready. I just, um, preparing this presentation, I was asked um, to present some, some ideas what to do if you do not have enough budget. And if you have enough budget and you can uh, hire PR agency, yes, I would always recommend it because you have focus on your business. And if you run or launch your, your startup, you have to be strictly focused on your business. And I can imagine that doing PR relations, not your core uh, asset or not your core um, activity that you are doing. Uh, okay, there are two questions because I have uh, missed one, but uh, the, the, the first one is, do you recommend any platform with journalists to pitch to, or is it better to approach a journalist with personal touch? Uh, I strongly recommend to approach journalists with personal touch because let's imagine, of course, there, there are platforms, you know, to, to put your PR relations, but let's imagine the ma typical mailbox of journalists day to day is, is fully packed with press relations. It's about 100, 200 press relations. And uh, let's imagine which press relations you, you would pick up. Don't know, yes? And uh, if somebody, if they have, they, I mean, journalists, if journalists have contacts with with some some startups or some experts because they know okay so you know mr john kowalski knows everything about cloud or mr anna nova knows everything about i don't know blockchain or or, or something they would read them because we do not have time sometimes patience um, to to find uh, find myself uh, find by themselves so i strongly recommend to um, to maintain personal touch. Okay, do you think that the best way to do this is via via email to this person or via intros or via events like Trek Cafe? Uh, you know, all these all these methods are uh, are are okay. Mm, but in my case, what worked well was that, for instance, I read interesting article on something, and um, and I wrote the, the mail to, to this to journalist, and in, in this mail, I, um, for instance, um, I wrote that thank you for this for this article. It makes um, it might um, um, I don't know. I would like to share with with your knowledge, and you know, by the way, my name is Joanna, and I am specializing in. Um, new technologies so and I, I have clients like this this or that so should you have any um, needs to explore for for instance solutions of hp or uh, products of alcatelucent i uh, we can you know ha have a little coffee and just talk so it was like this mm, right now um and i'm, I'm uh, networking on LinkedIn. I'm trying to be on to be present on um, some workshops, on some um, startups um, meetings, or anywhere where I can find journalists or you know anybody from the from the, the audience I, I like. So it's networking, it's writing email with referring to uh, to the activity this person did, you know, just not to be like very generic, hello, you know, uh, this is my um, please find and those press relations about the uh, situation on the road. I think that it will, uh, it would be you know very interesting for you. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I believe that this is uh, that kind of event that we delete even without reading sometimes. Uh, yep. Okay, uh, Conrad asks how to spot a great PR agency and how not to overpay for its services. Oh, it's a good question uh, <laughs> regarding startups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what you can what you can do. Um, uh, you can invite PR uh, agencies to the bid process. So you can ask them to, um, first you have to make kind of brief, what would you like to do if you would like to um, launch product or to, if you would like to have some help in crisis situation. This is something that, that PR agencies do also. And, um, <clears throat> and you can make some competitions if you would like to um, pick up the, the right agency. This is one way. Another is that uh, that you can see what communications of the company, because companies uh, communicate constantly. So what communications uh, do you like? For instance, uh, you noted that, I don't know, the company X and, and Y are um, posting often uh, the um, articles on this or that. So um, you can you can find or you can start to search what your agency uh, is behind them. Uh, or is that any, a peer specialist in the within the company because uh, sometimes happens like like, like this, but I, I would start with um, with um, what communication of the brand you like, and find out what PR agency is behind. This is something. Okay. Um, okay. I, there are some, some tips from uh, from from Pavel that you should ask some questions for hiring the PR agency, uh, do I have something to say? If so, what do I know with stakeholders uh, to communicate with when I should to reach? Uh, uh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. there are a lot of good tips. I think that we all will uh, read it later. And second one, uh, you have mentioned that communication is also about products, strategy, uh -huh. goals, etc. So is it possible to prepare a great communication without having a good value proposition? or other factors connected to mm, Let me think. Great communication without having a good value proposition or other factors connected to them. Mm. Um, well, so um, um, maybe, maybe value proposition is a buzzword which is, uh, which is big, but if you think, uh, let's start uh, of what's your your product, uh, how your product will help your your, cl uh, your clients. So, why did you invent this this product? How would you like to sell this product? And if you list the advantages, the benefits of your product, I think you will you will craft the the value proposition because you can imagine how you for instance how you start your your pitch talk if you um contacting with journalists is the same like you uh, like you meet with your investor your future your investor to be you have to convince him that you have something good for um for uh, for the rest of the world so you have to at least have two or three benefits of your of your solution that you would like to highlight and this is enough so it's 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 you know it's the value proposition that you have so do i answer correctly that you believe that if you have an idea that you believe in you have the value proposition i guess so because because let's imagine how would you like to sell your product you have to enumerate the benefits of the of it yes because you have to get convinced to your to your product and to explain why is it better than other one so you have to be well prepared of course you can uh, you, there is no need you know to to make the one sentence speech but i strongly recommend it because it's um it makes your life easier because you you have these words you know on the table. You think about it. And it's you know like your credo, like your mission. So 
it it's it makes simple but it's not something that you have to do it's not you know mandatory but anyway what you have to do is the, all the benefits of, of your products because you have to start to sell this is it and sell to journalists to sell to, to a customer to anybody who wants to listen <laughs> okay okay thank you i, I like this idea that oh, when you believe you have value proposition in your head you just need to find yeah, I, yeah I, I like this one, really yeah yeah uh, i agree but um, uh, during your presentation you have you have shown us your collaboration uh, your i mean of the cloud with venture cafe that mm -hmm. organized the first day gatherings and um I do believe in such cooperation with uh, with events, but it's not easy when you're a startup that nobody heard of before. So, how to convince, for example, venture cafe to let you pitch in front of their audience and mm -hmm. make the cooperation? Mm, you know, I I think I guess that venture cafe sometimes looking for for somebody with with experience in the field. A sector, not you know, in um, it should be a startup, you know, with a great experience. But I think that if you are good at something and you can prove it because you have the knowledge in the, in the sector and in your, in your area, and there is a great possibility that there are others who want to to listen. To you, I think that it's it's always a way, you know, to to find somebody like. Um, uh, startup accelerator, uh, venture cafe, or another. Um, you, mm, I think also that there are lots of, uh, for instance, in Poland, there are lots of associations or foundations. For instance, because um, I'm from cloud industry, so for instance, in open source, and they are very open to to, to startups who who want to. Contribute and wants to engage, and it's a matter of time that, for instance, if somebody say to this association, okay, so let's do something together. Let's I don't know craft an article together, or let's have a joint workshop together for very niche and narrow group, but very specific one, um, not universal, but extremely um, you know tailored at the group. I think that this. It's something that is valuable, and there is a great uh, chance that somebody would like to uh, cooperate with you. Sorry, wait, I need to unmute myself. Okay, that that's a, it's a good answer, I believe. So I have another question. Oh my God, how startups should prepare brand communication, marketing strategy from scratch? I would be grateful for any tips from your side. So, well, I will start with assuming what assets I have in my team. Um, it means that I would like to know if I have expert with, with me or, or not. If I have expert that I can consult with, it's, it's great because I will use their knowledge to craft, for instance, articles or, or communications. Um, I will start with them making the list of potential um, of potential clients, but um, customers and media and uh, journalists, and also influencers that can help me. Um, for instance, I would like to. Um, I would make up a short information on what my uh, company or product is about what i would like to what i would like to sell and find out the journalist or the blogger or um, association or meetings I, I i said that i would present or offer my solution this is something i will also um make some uh, references if i have something because I sold, for instance, my, my products to certain group or certain company. And if you sold your product to certain group or a certain company, it's great because you can start with um, 
taking the reference from from the company and it's really great because uh, for example you can um, communicate via linkedin or, um, or engage them if they want because sometimes they don't want it but if you want to engage them and help you with some promotions like uh, joint activity like joint press press release, press release where you can um present your your solution and uh, um benefits they give this is uh, something that i would start at the at the very beginning and also i would uh i would focus on competitors because um because we can learn a lot from our competitors because for instance we can see what worked well or or not so we can do something better or uh, you know or repeat um, their activity and you know in a different way because you know repeating it's not something something wrong because we will add uh, some something new from from our side <laughs> that's a wow. talk i think that you you will lose your voice after this workshop because there are so many questions uh i Three more. How to grow mm -hmm. marketing team for online SaaS business? Um, you can um, team is uh, is a big word. You can have um, one expert who is collaborating with you, and it shouldn't be someone in your uh, in your team. It can be someone who is um, who is a friend or a colleague and would like to support you in in some way if you know speaking about about low buy because if you uh, if you would like to have a marketing uh, team you are trying you, you are uh, starting to hire but i would start with somebody from the from the field like the like the um, you can for instance read some um uh, LinkedIn articles because in articles you there are there's lots of um, um, content that are written for for instance for for somebody who is the expert or who like to be an expert and you can um, you can contact with with this person. Um, the the question is if you would like to hire and really build up your 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 marketing team. And you just simply start to to find somebody on, the, on on the market, or you would like to do on the low cost, and it means that, for instance, you can pay somebody for for project. Um, for instance, this uh, this person can help you with writing uh, content or doing database. So this is something uh, which can be the the solution. Okay, one uh, one more uh, connected with the, the building with a question from Ola. Um, do you recommend any marketing tools for startups to use in daily activities? Mm. <clears throat> well, I think would recommend a media monitoring tool. Mm, this is something that I would uh, that I would start with, because uh, you have uh, on in one tool you have everything what is going on in your in your sector. You can choose the uh, keywords that are important for you, and thanks to this tool, like uh, Media Twenty Four, for instance, or Twenty One, for instance, you can. Um, distill the, the journalists, the titles, the topics, the area of their interest that you can, you know, uh, use and amplify later. So th this is it. And, you know, I'm not sure if there is one tool that would uh, help you, you know, with everything. I think that it would be a mix of, um, of LinkedIn, Facebook, media monitoring tool and uh, other internet media to, to to start communication. Okay, uh, for those startups who aren't on Padby, uh, about what uh, Anna said, once you're registered as a startup and you have a profile, you can use some discounts on Brand24 that also your inter internet uh, collaborations 
and we've got time for one more question, and it's a question from me. I will <laughs> I will let myself because um, although most of our audience are startups, I think that we we could find some people from corporations or from uh, from, uh, from some businesses who are already developed. What would you um, what would you say to them if they wanted to? support startups when they have good idea and no money what can we do what wow, the big fishes great can question. do for small fishes i would say well join forces really and <clears throat> you asked me about uh, about the venture cafe so if uh, there is a big fish and want to support a uh, small fish i think that they can team up make make for instance uh, the collaboration and show themselves in venture cafe or or event like this they can participate in a uh, in special dedicated event for in the area that that startup it, it operates because it costs um they can make some references if they are using the, the services of startup and make a video on it and you know make the viral so wow it's, it's 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 you know it's great if somebody says yes you know the guys are, are perfect and this solution is wonderful and it's all uh, this or, or, or that many many cases because uh, big fish has money has budget and has um possibilities um, the, wider than, <laughs> than, than startups so you know there are lots of lots of questions you know lots, lots of possibilities so we can dress up you know the, the, the list what we what we can do together but everything what we'll like some some noise around would be grateful yeah i think we have the subject for the next workshop for for <laughs> about what can big and medium fishes for the small ones. Uh, and uh, we have a comment that don't dream about viral work for it. Okay, and um, are there any other questions to Joanna? I believe that she gave you a LinkedIn account and you can hit her right there if you like. Okay, so thank you very much. It was, thank you. It was a pleasure. I, I made uh, some notes my, uh, myself, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot. Thank you very much.